Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School out here at the Pathfinder Classroom. What I thought we would do today is have a discussion on shotgun chokes. I have a lot of questions about full choke, modified choke, cylinder bore choke, and all those things. People keep asking me the more videos I make involving the 12 gauge, the more videos I make with flint locks and muzzle loaders, uh, cap locks and things like that. I get a lot of questions about the subject. So I thought what I would do today is I would go through an explanation of it with you so that everybody has a better understanding of it. When we're done, you'll probably know more than 95% on the planet know about shotgun chokes to begin with. But we're going to talk about three main chokes. There's about six or seven different chokes out there, but there's three main ones that you're going to deal with. And it's full choke, modified choke, and cylinder bore choke. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. First, we need to talk about calibers and gauges. Okay, so to truly understand what we're talking about when we're talking about chokes, we first need to understand the difference between caliber and gauge. I've explained this before in another video, but gauge is basically a, an old-time method of judging the size of the bore of a gun or rifle by how many lead balls you could make for that gun to the pound. So a 12-gauge shotgun, you could make 12 balls to the pound. You can make 12 round balls for that gun from one pound of lead. 20 gauge would be 20, 16 gauge would be 16, and so on. The only one that's different than that is 410. It's not really a 410 gauge. 410 is actually a caliber. It's 41 caliber. So calibers are measured in the Dewey Decimal System. So they go by tenths of an inch. A 12 gauge is basically 729 or 730 caliber. So it's Almost 75, which would be three quarters of an inch, three quarters of one inch, would be 75 caliber. So 729 is very close to three quarters of an inch, a little less. You're getting into 10 gauge when you get this big. So 729 is important to understand because the caliber number of your gun is more important than the gauge when you're talking about chokes. And I'll explain that to you in just a minute. Okay, so let's discuss shotgun barrels, first of all, and understand the parts of our shotgun as far as the upper receiver goes, and talk about the different parts and how they function, and then we can better understand what we're looking at. Basically, you have the chamber, which is here, which is where you put the shell. You'll have a two and a half, two and three quarter, three inch chamber in your gun, which dictates the length of shell that it's capable of taking. You can always put a, a, a shorter shell in a longer chamber, but you can't put a longer shell in a shorter chamber. So that's where your bullet goes. So we'll draw our little, our little shotgun shell goes right in here. All right, this is our shotgun shell. And we'll put a 12 gauge on there. All right, it's going to take up more room than that. That's a little bit, uh, a little bit glorified. As soon as it leaves, as soon as this gun goes off and the shot travels into the barrel, you have what's called a forcing cone. And that brings it down to cylinder bore. Down here where the cylinder is, it brings it down to the exact diameter of your cylinder. And like we talked about with 12 gauge, that is 729. Or some people say 73 caliber. It's actually 729. That's important to understand. So this is the cylinder, which is the rest of the barrel, up to the front couple inches. There's a transition in here that's basically a secondary forcing cone that drops down just a little bit more if you don't have a cylinder bore choke. If you have any choke in this gun at all, and we'll talk about that in a minute, it'll have a secondary cone here called a transition area. And then it will go into what's called the, the choke. This is where the choke's at on your gun, right at the end of the barrel. And then you have the transition area here. Now, so... Let's discuss the three types of chokes for a minute. We have cylinder bore choke, which basically is almost like no choke. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have modified choke. And we have full choke. And these are the only three we're going to talk about today because they're the most common. So if I have a cylinder bore choke, Basically, I don't have any of this. None of this is there. Once it forces, once it goes into the forcing cone, 
it's going to be however big that barrel is all the way to the end, which would be generally 729 on a 12 gauge, like I said, which means this whole barrel is going to be 729 or cylinder bore, they call it, which basically equates to no choke. There's no choke in that gun whatsoever. We'll talk about the reasons for chokes in just a minute. If we have a modified choke, then we have a slight reduction here into our transition, and then we have a slight reduction to our choke. If we have a full choke, we have more of a modification here and a smaller opening in the front of the barrel. And we're going to talk about what those equate to in just a second. Okay, guys, so real quick, I put up a chart here that you guys will be able to freeze frame YouTube and copy down if you want to. And we're going to talk about shotgun chokes and what they do to your gun, to the cylinder of your gun. I have the type of choke, the yardage that's supposed to be good and accurate to, and the reduction at the choke to the caliber of the gun. A cylinder choke basically is supposed to be good for out to about 20 yards. There's no reduction, so there's really no choke, and you're still at 7.29 caliber. A modified choke is supposed to be good for about 30 to 32, maybe 35 yards. You have a .02 reduction, making it a caliber of 709, .709 caliber. Once you get the full choke, that's supposed to be good for 40 plus yards of accuracy. And you have a .035 to .40 reduction, taking it down as far as .689 from 729. That's a huge reduction in the difference between the cylinder of that gun and the actual front end of the barrel. And that's going to be important, especially, especially if you are casting your own round ball to make pumpkin balls or slugs for your 12-gauge shotgun. And this is why I always tell people, use a modified choke. A modified choke is a good medium in there. There's not a whole lot of reduction to the gun. You can still get pretty good yardage out of it. And you're not going to mess it up too bad by buying the wrong ammunition or buying the wrong mold to mold your own round balls because most of the round ball molds that are made for 12 gauges are made for at least a modified choke. Most of the ammunition that's sold on the market can be shot out of a full choke. They make it a smaller diameter on purpose. But modified choke is your best bet for an equilibrium between the yardage that is good and the reduction in the barrel if you're making hand loads for that thing. Or if you're, you know, shoving rocks down the barrel and all that kind of good stuff in an emergency situation, you're better off with the modified choke than the full. You're going to get more yardage out of the full choke, but really, that's for wing shooting. That's for shooting at birds and stuff that are in the air 40 yards away. Nobody needs to be that far away from anything to shoot it. 30 to 32, 35 yards should be good for you. Okay, guys, real quick, one last thing I wanted to answer on this video. I have a lot of guys ask, you know, why does a full choke hold a pattern farther than a cylinder bore choke or a modified choke? Pretty simple hillbilly math there. The smaller that opening is when that shot comes out, if you're shooting the same amount of shot through that cylinder, the smaller the opening is, the smaller that shot is coming out, the longer it's going to take it to spread out into a pattern. The wider open it is, the faster it's going to spread out. Now, there's a little bit more to it than that with, to do with back pressures and things like that because you've reduced that cylinder. You also build up some back pressure in the gun, which is why a full choke kicks harder than a modified choke. But that's the hillbilly explanation for it. Smaller coming out, it's going to take longer for it to spread over distance. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, my friends, associates, and my sponsors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.